the phi spiral being depicted maintains its clockwise expansion rate from this point throughout the remainder of these lectures. As we move inward toward the origin point of the phi spiral pattern, let us again be reminded this association of the development of the cosmos with the pattern of a phi spiral is probably arbitrary. However, the association of the development of the human brain with the pattern of a phi spiral is not, and as we shall be seeing, there are apparent similarities between the brain's various tissues and the arrangements of massive quantities of stellar mass in the evolving cosmos. Let us begin our examination of this model by closing in toward the origin point from the section of the phi or Fibonacci spiral graph associated in neural development with the so-called reptilian hindbrain suborgans of the human brain. In the brain, the organelles present in this area are the cerebellum, the medulla oblongata, and the pons. In the graphic chart of the cosmos applied to the same shape, the phi spiral, we find ourselves amidst a period of universal history marked by cosmic expansion at an asymptotic rate, preceded by cosmic expansion at a series of less drastic rates, preceded by the formation of the earliest main sequence stars, preceded by the division of the four elemental forces, only one Planck time following the Big Bang. As we close in further toward this origin point of the phi spiral based combined models of the human brain and the light cone history of the cosmos, we find the origin point marking the Big Bang at the birth of our modern cosmos in the light cone model of universal time and marking the midpoint between the pineal and pituitary glands in the development of the brain stem's central core cluster of suborgans. On the chart, it is marked by the absolute value of zero. Notice at this point, there are two spirals emanating from separate origin points in this model. One spiral, marked in green in this section, is the Phi or Fibonacci spiral. The other, marked in red for now, is the regular logarithmic or pi spiral. In the cosmic scale model, the red pi spiral may symbolize space, while the green phi spiral may symbolize time, as the cosmos conditions of physics change over time between these twin spirals in this model. However, in the model of the brain, the relationship between the red pi spiral and green phi spiral is irrelevant. To begin our examination of this model in earnest, we may start by considering each aspect of the model according to quadrants, in order ascending clockwise outward. So, following the singularity of the absolute value of zero, we have the first iteration or quadrant passed through by the phi and pi spirals, and it is the first that shows them split into two separate arcs, one green, one red. The first iteration or quadrant is labeled with a Roman numeral one, and occurs just to the left, horizontally, from the absolute value of zero at the spiral's origin. So we see the absolute value of zero breaks apart into the relative values of zero sub x below and vertical, and zero sub y above and horizontal. 
as the singularity of absolute value zero breaks apart into the relative values of zero sub x and zero sub y, it passes through a phase of becoming a p instanton and then undergoes the Big Bang causing the formation of the first matter in the cosmos. It is here the red pi spiral measuring space begins and arcs around swiftly through the second, third, and fourth quadrant iterations to catch up again with the green phi spiral measuring time at the moment of one Planck time following the Big Bang. This additional level of the red pi spiral from the quadrant iterations labeled 1 through 5 signifies the spontaneous rapid division following the Big Bang of the four elemental forces in order clockwise from core outward, water or gravity, air or electromagnetism, fire or fission, an earth or fusion. By the fifth iteration, the cosmos had begun to form given the basic ingredients for the physics we know today. Following from quadrant iteration labeled Roman numeral 5 to the next quadrant iteration labeled Roman numeral 6, we find the twin spirals overlap and when they break this array, following iteration Roman numeral 6, the green and red color coding of the space and time, pi and phi spirals reverses. Following the sixth iteration, expanding clockwise outward, the pi spiral is green and the phi spiral is red. The segment where they both overlap for one quadrant's arc combined as one is labeled in black as the main sequence for the formation of the earliest stars. At iteration Roman numeral 6 we find the formation of the Alpha Galaxy and the death of the first star as it was reborn to become the first black hole at the center of the Alpha Galaxy. Between the sixth iteration and quadrant iteration Roman numeral 7 is the era of nebulae forming. At the sixth iteration we also start to see another sequence of labels that will continue through to the end and these measure distance durations of that location away from our present vector of location in space-time and are labeled using the measurements of light years to this extent. The sixth iteration is labeled 10 to the seventh light years and the seventh iteration is labeled 10 to the eighth light years because our present vector location in space-time is symbolized on this chart as we are in orbit around a main sequence star at iteration 6 where the main sequence of stars ends and the era of nebulae begins. Further away in the distances of deep space we can see even beyond this seventh iteration which is marked by the end of the nebulae era and the beginning of the era of spiral galaxies. From quadrant iteration 7 to quadrant iteration 8, it is the era when the majority of space is comprised of spiral galaxies. But prior to the era when these many spiral galaxies have begun to form intergalactic relativities and correspondences, from the 8th to the 9th interval, these spiral galaxies will gather together to form the intergalactic filaments, as we shall see next. Notice that this quadrant, from the 7th 
to the eighth iterations is correspondent also to the reptilian hindbrain in humans. The iteration from the eighth to the ninth quadrants will be equivalent to the mammalian midbrain, and the ninth to the tenth quadrant iteration will be equivalent to the human forebrain. As we shall see also, there are profound, observable similarities between these models in reality. At the beginning of the eighth iteration, on the red phi spiral symbolizing time, the simultaneity of the birth of life symbolized by DNA and the beginning of the death of the matter energy era overall is noted only briefly, but its significance should not be overlooked. Somehow, here at iteration 8 on the spiral of time occurs the birth of life and the original complex organisms to arise from the primordial ooze, and yet the location on this chart of our planet's location in space is nearer to iteration 6. As we shall see, our planet formed first, followed by life on it, followed by the rise of our own civilization during the era of the intergalactic filaments. The evolution of our society will be measured by a series of black arcs looping back and forth between the green pi spiral of space and the red phi spiral of time. As we shall see next, the era of intergalactic filaments in universal space corresponds between quadrant iterations 8 and 9, with the mammalian midbrain suborgans of the human brain, including the aforementioned somatosensory tissues of the cerebrum's lateral lobes, located just above and behind the ears, which account for the majority of the processes involving the five senses. The era of intergalactic filaments on a chart of cosmic scale space-time also measures the rise of human empires over the last 6,000 or so years since the agrarian revolution. By the time the spiraling cycle has reached its ninth quadrant iteration, the era of intergalactic filaments is ending and human imperialism is already past its peak. If we intend to even live to see the cosmos as it will look like when it fully achieves this ninth iteration phase, we will have to preserve our minds as electromagnetic ores within the cosmos to persist in existing, because long before such time as the end of the era of intergalactic filaments, our own planet will have met its doom. The ninth iteration we see now is, as we shall see in the next lecture, the same as the midpoint of electromagnetism, directly between its first peak, conjunctive with psi, or the mental energy harnessed by the mind, and its second peak when, at the speed of light squared, it bleeds into the force of gravity. As mentioned, we will learn more about this aspect of the arc of human activity, as it itself is based on a pattern of elemental decomposition from matter into energy. The era that follows the ninth iteration and the end of the era of intergalactic filaments is cognate to the human forebrain and the most complex neural tissues inside the human cerebral cortex. Visual likenesses have been discovered by comparing electron microscopic photographs of chemically stained neurons and synapses inside of the forebrain cerebrum, and the computer graph representation of the map of the visible cosmos relating the locations of all the distant galaxies to one another along the intergalactic filament strands that connect them.
the galaxies seem to act like synapses in this intergalactic neural net, where the black holes at spiral galaxies' cores behave like axon dendrite gaps in the nervous system, where the invisible gravities forming the strands connecting these spiral galaxies along the intergalactic filaments behave like the myelin sheaths of these dendrite synapses, and where pulses of tachyonic gravity substitute at a cosmic scale for pulses of neurotransmitters or electrochemical induction inside the brain itself. The era on the cosmic clock equivalent to the human forebrain is the era past the end of the intergalactic filament era, however, and is marked by the decomposition of these filaments and their decay into chaos and disarray until, ultimately, all matter is broken down into energy. The era between the ninth and tenth iterations on this spiral map of entropic decay from matter into zero-point energy is marked by the decline of the amount of matter, bosons with mass, in the local universe relative to the amount of energy fermions with almost no mass. As the last amounts of electromagnetism fizzle out and become gravity, the last surviving souls preserving minds as electromagnetic auras will also die out. As the period of peak gravity reigns in this era, existence, as such, is defined by shortage and scarcity. There is very little matter or space left by which to define the local universe at this phase. The mind, however, can predict conditions of fourth dimensional space that will persist, their geometries governing the future's physics even following the decline and fall of all matter in the cosmos into energy. When only ZPE remains, the tenth iteration is reached. There remain mysteries at this end of the spectrum that persist even to the minds of modern quantum astrophysicists. What lies beyond this nulliverse pure ZPE may merely prove to be a repeat of the same or a similar series of events to what we've already seen occurred and which led to us being here now. In this theory, a random quantum fluctuation within the nulliverse of unlimited ZPE or ether energy causes a singularity to collapse in upon itself, and thus from matter to be reformed from pure energy alone. At the tenth iteration, the distance between the twin spirals of space in green as pi, and time in red as phi, is at its maximum. The utmost furthest extent of the red Phi spiral of time comes to an end when, compared to the model of the brain inside the human head, right in front of the eyes, and the lines from this point to the origin point of the entire model's phi over pi spirals located at the Big Bang, the pineal gland, at the absolute value of zero, or on the map located just behind the center of the ear. So here we see the full model of the phi over pi spirals in green and red, how they overlap between the fifth and sixth iterations, how they are labeled according to a map of the universe's evolution over time, like a spiral light cone and how they resemble the patterns of development of the portions of the human brain.